Hey everybody, this is So Many Sequels. I'm Josh. I'm Garrett. And I'm David. Welcome to our mid-year review for 2024. This is kind of a state of the podcast, as it were. State of the movie uh, industry, I guess, as it were. Uh, because we yeah. are the movie industry, as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> people come to us for our expertise. We go out oh, yeah. and, and watch these movies for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so that you oh, yeah. know if you should watch them or not. So we're going to talk about our favorite movies of the year up to this point. There's still a whole half <laughs> a year left to go. So I'm sure these lists will change. We're going to talk about just a quick recap of some of the themes we've done this year. Uh, but we're going to kick things off uh, with David. You're going to give us a state of the box office uh, mm -hmm. where I believe it is just crumbling. Oh, um, well, yeah, we've talked about it quite a lot the last few weeks. It's been a hot topic on s several social media <laughs> platforms. Uh, but uh, the year of 2024 is overall down compared to 2023 uh, and doing great compared to 2021, uh, but about right on line with 2022. And people, I think, thought cinema was back, you know, because of how big 2023 was. But anyway, Barbenheimer, um, Barbenheimer was too big. Your Oppenheimer, Barbenheimer, the whole the whole thing. And then you also had, you know, uh, you know, in the last few years we had Top Gun, Avatar, you know, Spider Man, No Way Home, all the all those things making huge. You know, the Super Mario Brothers all making big money. So it's really made this year look bad in comparison. The top five movies of the year so far are at number five. Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, uh, with $112 million so far. Uh, number four, we've talked about it a lot, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is brought in $139 million as of June 1st. Uh, Kung Fu Panda 4 is at number three with $193 million. Uh, Godzilla X-Kong is your number two movie of the year with $195.8, just under $200 million. Maybe it could cross that, maybe, uh, before it leaves theaters. And your number one movie of the year, it came out March 1st, is Dune Part 2 uh, with $282.1 million. Uh, $82 million opening is the highest of the year for that movie. So that's your uh, that's your top five. There's been a lot of great movies from this year that we've seen that are in, your, that are in the top 20, top 10. So uh, definitely uh, there have been good movies worth seeing. We've, we've, there's been a lot of highly reviewed movies this year. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I just yeah, the saw, audiences aren't aren't turning out as much. I saw earlier today that Denny, uh, the director of Dune, uh, told a reporter in Toronto at the Canadian Screen Awards that he was disappointed that Dune Part Two is still the number mm -hmm. one movie of the year. <laughs> he was like, "Where are you?" Yeah. <laughs> he said, "I hope soon that there what will be happened? other successes at the, the box summer? office. I hope sooner or later that this summer box office will be much better." Um, he yes. said, I think we We've, need movies that are theatrical been... experiences that will fully embrace the power of the theater, and I'm not just talking about Dune 2. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it a lot for this show. I've seen a ton of back and forth over on, you know, on, on various social media platforms. Like, uh, film, film industry is, is, is a merger of art and, com and, and commerce, and, like, you know, you really need both to be working well because if the theater industry goes like it i think long term it's bad for the it's bad for us it's bad for the consumer um and it's not to say that good movies won't be made but you're not going to get them in the same way and you're not going to be able to um you know enjoy them the same way like people think oh they'll just all go to streaming to my home oh yeah well, they're gonna start charging you like a lot to watch movies at home uh because you'll have no other option so i don't know uh yeah, normally a movie that opens in March isn't the number one movie by June. But anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Um, I, but let's move on to some of the movies we've been watching this year. Yeah, we've had we we really hit a, a good a good stride with theme months. I feel like mm -hmm. over the past year, really, even beyond. And so far, we've covered so many sweethearts. Our was it the second or third time we'd done it before? I think it was the, was this our yeah, second? I think it's the second. Technically, we've done some rom coms in the past that I've. We did our first uh, best picture yeah. month to mm -hmm. coincide with the Oscars. We did A24 April. Full <laughs> month of A24 movies. 
in mm-hmm. the, the it, most it, successful yeah. theme that we've ever done. Truly, mm-hmm. I mean, the numbers are staggering. <laughs> um, what 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 was your guys' favorite so far of those three? I mean, for me, I think it was Best Picture Month. That was a that was a that was a solid month. Yeah, um, we saw films like uh, like In the Heat of the Night, mm-hmm. uh, The Sting, Amadeus. Uh, and well, we had already seen the best picture winner Oppenheimer, so we didn't have to really go back and do that. But we also we you can re- see our review of the Academy Awards from this year. That was one of my favorite. I think that was my favorite month. I lean towards a little so many sweethearts boys. We yeah. showed a little softer side. Yeah, we came out <laughs> swinging after I think a lot of people said we swung and miss after our first attempt. Uh-huh, That's true. Uh-huh, not so uh-huh. pleased with our initial picks, but we came back. With mm-hmm. some pretty solid and interesting think pieces to some extent. Mm-hmm. You know, I had Return to Me with David Duchovny, a nice mm-hmm. little surprise there. Uh, we had a classic and When Harry Met Sally. Yes. Right, right. David? Is that what it was? That's right. For some reason, I yeah. questioned that one for, for a little bit. And then uh, Josh brought her, which has made all kinds of news lately mm-hmm. uh, with the uh, Pre- Open AI pick. and Scarlett Johansson and everything. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. was a anti rom com kind of a thing. But it was very, I think it was a fun month. Yeah, these are these are good 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 picks and arguments. Um, I really? I'm I, I I'm not gonna do the the normal thing, which would just be to pick a twenty four pull since that's the third that's left open. Uh, while I yeah. did enjoy it, I think my I'm gonna go with David and say that my favorite was the Best Picture Month too, uh-huh. just because of the kind of diversity of film that we took a look at. Um, you know, we also get some some. Mm. Uh, uh, heat every now and then for not picking movies that are above a certain age. So right. we we dug a little deeper in the film vault than we normally do. So that was uh, good for all of us, I think. Uh, and mm-hmm. we found some some we had some good time, good discussions with those best picture winners. Um, we did. So I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Um, David, you did, did you calculate our average letterbox score here? Is that what I no, see in no, our show notes? Yeah, so this isn't our, like, the three of us average letterbox oh. score. That would take a little bit more time, but I did calculate the average score of the movies we've watched this year, and it's a 3.9. So very high, because if any movie gets a 3.9 on letterbox, it's like, that's pretty pretty well that's liked. That's pretty... We, we, uh, yeah, we've had a lot of... of the picks we're, we're picking. Yes. <laughs> If you I mean, look at A24 movies are film critic fan or film fan. <laughs> Plus the best fan, picture. And we had <laughs> best picture. We kind of came in with big numbers. Yes. Uh, if you look at, um, I think if you look at, we've, we've done uh, eight, we've done uh, 12 movies this year, I believe. Ten, no, sorry. We've done 14 movies. I think s- at least six or seven of them are above 4.0. So. It's been a pretty good year. So I'd say so. It's been a pretty things. good year, and we're gonna have a lot more to come. It'll be interesting to yeah. see what that final number is gonna be at the end of the year. If we, uh, if we, we go dread. downhill at all in quality, uh, or if we, we can, can only... keep that three point nine. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah. Let's get into the, um, the real exciting part of this episode where we're gonna talk about our favorite movies of the year so far. Um, how this is gonna work is each of us is going to list our top three. You're going to say, like, my number three is blank, because blank, mm-hmm. a very quick defense statement of why. I say defense like it's a debate. I, didn't, I don't mean it like that. Just like, you know, your reasoning. Um, yeah. Go through all three, and then when we've all said what, we've, what, what our movies are, we're going to see, see, see how they fall out, what the differences are, what the similarities are, and then we'll have a full open discussion about it. Um, I'm re- I'm I'm excited because I think this could be a little all over the place. I hope you don't think so. Well, we'll, maybe we'll see. Nah, you don't it's think going to be have reordered. A number one. <laughs> I hope not. Are we going to have to reevaluate his chair? Oh, I had to list backwards. Hang on. Here we well, go. <laughs> well, I'll do mine. I'll do mine first. Um, my number three. Let me get my letterbox list here pulled up. Um, right now, my number three movie is Furiosa, a Mad Max story. Um, okay. You can go back just a couple of weeks ago and listen to our full review of that or watch it on our YouTube channel. Uh, I uh-huh. just 
thought that it was a very good follow-up slash prequel to Fury Road. I thought Anya Taylor-Joy filled the role well. Chris Hemsworth brought an interesting new character to it. I overall really enjoyed it, so it is number three on my list. Number two um, is Dune Part 2. Uh, this mm. is a movie that I was highly anticipating after the first one came out, and it did not disappoint me at all. Um, in fact, I think I enjoyed it more than that first one, just because the story really gets going in new ways. It builds just a whole epic sci-fi world that I feel like a lot of other franchises try and fail at, and I was really taken by a lot of the cinematography and effects and just the way the story is told. So Doom Part 2 is my number two favorite movie of the year so far. And number one is was a surprise to me by how much I liked it is Challengers. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, really loved this movie. Um, I, I, it's a romantic drama, but it had me on the edge of my seat for the majority of the film because of the intensity of it. Uh, because it is about so much more than just a romance and tennis. Um, it is like, what if tennis were sex is actually what the movie is, <laughs> like, straight up. And I just found it really fascinating, and the performances were really interesting. And this movie uh, is why I'm excited to see Josh O'Connor in Knives Out um, 3, Wake Up, Dead Man, yeah. um, because he was great in this, so challengers right now is sitting at my number one see if it get, it'll get dethroned um at some point later this year but mm. right now that's where mine sit let's mm, very sub yeah. interesting Garrett what's yours oh you know it was a little more diverse than I thought you and I have a little crossover but okay. uh different a little reordered uh, I would say my number three is it had been my number one until I reevaluated here this afternoon but uh, moved it down to uh, number three, it's Dune Part Two. Um, um, mm -hmm. I agree; it looks great. The world is wonderful. My issue is I don't remember any damn thing about it <laughs> compared it. to the other two. Um, and I and that's not a fault of the franchise, it, or it's it's more of a me thing. You know, I'm overall unfamiliar with Dune, and so it took me forever to watch that first one, um, and so I don't remember much about it either. But I feel like it's one of those that I would go back and watch and be like okay, yeah, I'm going to put this back at number one easily. And because it was enjoyable, it sucked me in from the moment that I was in there. Um, it is the highest rated movie that I've watched this year. Um, but my number three favorite. Uh, number two, Josh, was Challengers, another one for you and me. I had a different reaction than you because I hate watched the ever-loving crap out of this movie. I hated every single person I want, I just, but I was like, I can't stop watching because the performances were great and the way, and like the, the score was great and the storytelling was great and it was all great. I just, I hated everyone. <laughs> and, and like, it was just, it was just difficult. It was tiring. And so that was kind of my emotional reaction to it, but it's so much fun to talk about and mm. think about and remember. Uh, and then my number one movie. Is one that we were reviewed during uh, a twenty four poll. It's Civil War. I oh, think that yeah, wow. I think that Civil War has been the most intense movie that I've seen, and it really just had so much commentary. Obviously, but it was interesting commentary, and it, it led to a very fun discussion. I don't think it's a perfect movie or anything, but I honestly want more. Uh, I hope that they have something else. They left me a little intrigued by what this world could be. Um, you'd have to go in like reverse, uh, but man, it was just, uh, it was just a lot of fun to talk about. So those are my top three. All right. Solid, solid. David, what right. are yours? I gotta say, I'm loving this so far. We are going to have some minor crossovers here and there, but we're not, we're not uniform on this. Um, so my number three, I watched it just, uh, yesterday and a little bit this morning, um, is a documentary called Idea Man, and it's about Jim Henson directed by Ron Howard. And, um, you know, normally I, I kind of hesitate to sometimes include documentaries uh, in these types of lists just because they feel so... It's just such a different medium. It almost doesn't feel fair to compare it. But 
Um, I know I, I I know a lot about Jim Henson. I've been a big Muppets fan for a long time, and so I, I knew a lot of the story um, going in. But I thought that um, uh, Howard did a very good job at uh, telling not just the the events of his life, but also getting the people, both his real family and his found family, um, bringing them in. Frank Oz spoke in it, and Frank Oz had pretty much nothing to do with Disney since two thousand two, I think. Um, so he came in and he shared his experience of working with Jim and. You know, uh, many of you, have, so it wasn't just a bunch of celebrities coming in and going, oh, Jim was so great. Oh, well, the Muppets, I loved them so much. It was like really, there was a lot of heart in it. And um, they really dug deep on some stuff. They had some um, some rarely seen footage of some different things that Jim wanted to do. Like um, he had this idea for like a Broadway show that was going to be really experimental that never, never, never made it uh, and things like that. So, uh so that was a lot of fun, and I, I, I rate that very highly. I'm putting that at number three f- for now. Um, and number two, I have Furiosa, Mad Max Saga. Um, I'm not a big Mad Max person, but this movie's so good that, like, I just, I can't leave it out. Like, it's the it's definitely one of the best movies I've seen this year. I highly recommend it to anybody uh, who would be interested. Um, it, honestly, for my money, it's worth it for, for Anya Taylor-Joy and Chris, Ep- uh, Chris Hemsworth alone. They're great. And at number one, Profesh is his middle name. It's The Fall Guy, uh, starring Ryan Gosling and Emma Blunt, Emily Blunt. And I just dug this. This is the type of movie I go to the movie theaters to see. Um, had a lot of fun. Uh, any movie that features the darkness is going to get a high rating from me. And uh, yeah, so I, I really enjoyed it. And it's going to be my number one for now this year. And I'm, I mean, there's a part of me that's hoping that something better comes along because I did only give it four stars, but uh, that's where we are through this point of the summer. Man, the yeah, I should that's cl- a, yeah, that's great. I I you guys had good picks that I didn't because my fall the fall guy is number four on mine, so just outside mm-hmm. of my top three, and Civil War is number five on mine, just outside of that. Mm-hmm. So, um, love that. Yeah, and yeah. I, I should clarify by saying I've not seen Dune two and i've not seen challengers so maybe that'll change soon but that's why you don't see do maybe i'll have a dune june here <laughs> uh as we get started dune june Uh-oh. yeah and for me for Uriosa fell on my number five okay uh, uh you know what i i found i went and again stat padding yeah but had an opportunity to go see if and right now if stands in my number four movie i was quite mm. surprised by the enjoyment that i felt in that movie uh it i was surrounded by kids and families which is mm-hmm. great to see a full movie theater but also it's a little more emotional and a little more high concept than i think your typical kid movie um and because it involves real people risk. i don't know it doesn't have that same kind of pixar yeah. level of like this feels like a kid's movie this feels like mm-hmm. a parent movie that you can mm-hmm. bring your kids to you know yeah so it- just be forewarned on that it does sound like, um, David, you're going to have to watch Doom Part 2 and Challengers because I'm looking at yeah. our list. I'm comparing them here, and like, those are the two repeating movies that um, you are missing. Yeah, and, you know, I'll say, you know, Civil War is sitting at my number five as well. I got Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes just off in four. And, um, yeah, I need to. There's some big ones that I need to get to, and I know Dune Two is at least it's on Max now. So yeah. the problem is there is I never saw Dune One, so I need to circle around, watch Dune. You're gonna have watch a long Dune day. Two. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, maybe I'll watch old Dune. Maybe I'll watch Patrick Stewart Dune. You know, <laughs> that way I can have a full Dune June. Yeah, um, that's the only way is to commit to the franchise. That's your theme of 2024. Apparently, is you watch is, one movie to the and you're like, I'm watching the whole franchise now. Gotta watch the whole thing. Hey, we're a sequels podcast, That's so I true. gotta, you know, I gotta represent the gimmick. Commit live to the, the gimmick. Bit. I I gotta say, I'm surp- I mean, I'm not surprised because it's you, but I don't also, I don't mean that in a negative way. <laughs> but I'm surprised to see Idea Man on here, um, just because I hadn't. I mean, I I was kind of aware of that in my peripheral, mm-hmm. but I hadn't heard much about it. Um, yeah, but I love a you know who doesn't love Jim Henson and the Muppets so. I'm intrigued to check that out well, sometime. I, I I don't imagine it's going to be. I mean, it's it's not going to be like you know, nominated for any awards or anything like that. 
Um, but you know, last year we really enjoyed Still, the Michael J. Fox uh, uh, documentary. It's not that good. Like that one was really like mm-hmm. had a really interesting yeah. way that it de- delivered its narrative. And this is a more traditional, like biographical documentary. But uh, it just kind of like it was a, it, but it was well done. So like that's kind of where it, that's kind of how it lands a little higher than some of these other movies for me. Is like it's a it's a well done style biographical documentary on that regard. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, still was my favorite movie sure. last year. Yeah, boys. it was. Yeah, uh, I think um, it, most of our lists. I think we have. I think it's top five for all of us. I think as long as, as long as the documentary hits well with you and mm-hmm. is made well, you know, and it's got Ron Howard attached to it, so obviously there's a level of filmmaking and art that yeah, is going some... to be put down in there. Right. Yeah. So it's it's something better than. Uh, and no disrespect to this documentary, but go back last episode where I talked about movie pass, movie crash. I mean, that mm-hmm. movie is not going to make it into the top of my movie list. But I could, <laughs> I started watching Idea Man hopefully to watch it before this episode, but I didn't quite finish it. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I easily see how the way it's told is already so different and going to be delivered with a different purpose. So, yeah. And I'll uh, say this, no, no no fault for having it so high on your list there, boy. Oh no. no. But I was kind of glad because I was, I was like, this might be the only thing I have different because I know that we've all seen more or less a lot of the same movies this year. Right. But I was glad you guys have snuck some other stuff in there. Yeah, that, will well, say, that's the hard um, part of when you host a show where we watch the same movies. You gotta sneak it. You gotta sneak but, in the extras, but here and there. I gotta say this because we've been talking a lot this year about box office bombs, but Frank Oz in this uh, Idea Man documentary uh, has this. Like honestly, it's something we all know, but he sums it up in a really succinct way when he talks about the Dark Crystal, which was a movie Jim Henson directed that did not do well. <laughs> you know, if you've ever seen anything from the Dark Crystal, it's a very strange movie, and uh, it bombed horribly at the box office. And Frank said it wasn't a huge hit, but it was a big success because like everything that Jim and him and the rest of the crew wanted to do, they did it. Like they made created this whole movie. And while it may not have found huge, broad appeal, financial success, they achieved what they wanted. So uh, I, I think that's going to be one of my go-to lines about great movies that bomb from now on. All right. Interesting. Interesting. That'll mm-hmm. be my homework. I guess I'm the I'm the only one who hasn't started it yet, so I will get on that um, soon. Um, before we start to wrap up the show here, I did want to ask everybody: Do you have a worst thing you've seen this year so far? Because oh. m- my worst movie I saw this year so far is called Drive Away Dolls, <laughs> and I mm. did not like it. That's still there. Huh? It's still <laughs> there. Um, I gave it a star and a half. I don't remember much about it other than that was the movie I went to see when I recorded that viral Dune video. And that's that <laughs> movie's legacy. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Oh, no. Uh, that's all I remember. Oh. Here. That's my worst movie of the year. I'm only Mine glad I Ricky saw it because Stenicki. I went viral. Mm. Oh, yeah, of course. Mine is Ricky Stenicki. Uh, it is just stupid. You know, it's not, it's, I'm not trying to say it's the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's, it's pretty stupid. I mean, it's John Cena and Zac Efron doing stupid stuff. So it's, it's perfectly entertaining for dumb comedic purposes. (laughs) And for me, it is Atlas starring Jennifer Lopez. Um, It is a bad movie out the gate, but don't worry. It stops being bad after about 30 minutes and just gets boring. So... Oof. Uh, it's it saves itself a little bit. It's also one and a half stars on my letterbox ratings. Um, so yeah, the bad. Hey, uh, you know what? Awful by myself could be fun in a party. You know, like if you are looking to just, you know, I mean, hate watch. I I hate the term hate watch. <laughs> but if you're looking for something where you're gonna like laugh a lot, like I think a few years back we had a big party and we watched uh, uh from Justin to Kelly. And that was a hilarious movie to watch. Yeah, as a group, it was a, a minute you know? ago. <laughs> so it's that type of movie, I think. Maybe. Oh God. Okay. It also might be too long to be that type of movie. All right. Well, let's go ahead and switch gears here into our letterbox game. I don't know what it's gonna be because David has prepared a new mm. mid-year review version of it that um, he's just gonna uh, teach us the rules to right here on the show. How do we play this? Oh well, okay, guys. So we we talked about a little. We talked about them a little bit already. 
And this is more of a game for you two. Okay. And I, so I'm taking myself out of it this week because I already know the answers. But uh, uh, this is a chance. So on the letterbox scores, the letterbox game scores, I'm in the lead with 10. Garrett has eight. Josh has seven. So I thought since uh, we don't have a movie or review this week, I would look at the movies we've done this year. And you guys have two chances to get points here. You tell me which one is the highest rated movie on Letterboxd and which one from this year is the lowest rated movie on Letterboxd. So, uh, we'll go with Josh. You're you're currently in last. What do you think is the highest rated movie that we have reviewed for the show this year? Um, I am looking at our list real quick here. Let's see. We've done... You know, it's hard because we've got that best picture month. And while, like we said mm-hmm. earlier, we have that 3.9 average for the movies mm-hmm. we've watched this year. So mm-hmm. we already talked about how they're probably pretty high all around. I mm-hmm. think I'm going to throw out my guess as um, in the heat of the night. Okay. Garrett, do you have a guess? You're muted. Oh, there you Sorry. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. Uh, I'm relying on memory here, but I think Amadeus was quite high. Okay. I'm going to go with Amadeus. Interesting. All right. Both very good guesses. Both both wrong? No, Garrett gets the points. It is Amadeus. Nice. Amadeus is our highest rated movie we've watched this year. It's a 4.3 on Letterboxd. Um, now, uh, J- uh, Josh, if you were curious, because uh, I'll, I'll give you guys this one. In the Heat of the Night is a 4.0 on Letterboxd. It is not our lowest rated movie of the year. So now the question turns to, uh, so that's a point for Garrett. Josh and Garrett, what do you think is our lowest rated movie of the year? Um, Lowest rated movie. That's another tough one for the same reasons. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, well, no. I think it's gonna be the fall guy. All right. So Josh is Garrett or Josh Josh is Garrett. <laughs> Josh's guess is the fall guy. Garrett, what mm. do you think? This might be our lowest rated movie of the year that we reviewed. Um I think it's gonna be Return to Me. Uh, Return to Me. I now this it. was Garrett's <laughs> This was Garrett's pick for I so many sweethearts. Remember. That was February. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at the list. I cheated. I, I know. Honestly, I looked at it too. I just can't remember. Oh yeah, I, I've got. Yeah, I figured as long as you don't sort the list by highest rated. No, I'm looking at our website. Okay. Um, so so many the sequels. Winner, Ding. The winner here is Garrett again. Don't Garrett dang. also nailed it. It's return to me. So Garrett gets two bonus points this week. Wow, which will put him up to ten total, tied with me. So Josh now alone in last place with seven points. Dang it! Well, I'm glad it's at least tied now. That's, was that okay? Did you guys like that? No, that was yeah. yeah. I enjoyed that version of the game so, very so I, much. And so the 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 range there is three point three with Return to Me, all up to four point three with uh, Amadeus, and we've got several movies over four point oh. Um, so it's been uh, we've honestly been very spoiled. I think we will lower the overall the average score by the end of the year. Love it, love it. All right. Although well, our next movie we're going into is also very highly rated, I think. Yes, yes. Be sure that uh, you guys subscribe to the show um, here on our YouTube channel. You can do that. Subscribe. So many sequels. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast or you would like the podcast, uh, you can find that wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. Um, the next movie we're going to talk about is going to be Inside Out, the Pixar movie. We're getting ready for the sequel inside out 2 which is coming out soon so be on the lookout for those subscribe to our show so that you get those when they come out um we've got that goal of 202 youtube subscribers help us pass that so we can set our new one um and then follow us on social media connect with us there facebook instagram tiktok threads um follow us on those so many sequels or so many sequels pod um, let us know what you think of the show, what you think of the movies, and if you have any ideas for movies or themes that we should consider, we would love to hear f- from you. Um, mm-hmm. All right. We'll see you all next time. Bye.